Witness with your own eyes, or through the eyes of another. The fate of this world. Turn back. Leave now, while you can. You have strayed, Arisa. And for what? Lest you forget. You have a world where you belong. There, you are to fell the great evil in your path and rule the people as their sovereign. For that is who you are. And it is my wish that you should live out that life of purpose. The time has come for you to return. But my children shall see you there safely. Let us go home together. To a world under your rightful rule. To a world all your own. This is your will. Then behold, a world unmerciful, will left the benevolent hands of God's. This is your world, the world to which you longed to return. Alas, if only you had chosen to become sovereign, 
At the end of your travails, you could have ruled over these lands in perpetual peace. Yet that world of limitless possibilities has ended. You stand now upon its remains, the vestiges of a world that could have been so much more. Innumerable wills have served to deliver this world from extinction time and time again. You alone have refused to carry out that great purpose. What you see before you is the consequence of your apathy. Behold. has failed to be chosen, and as twill ne'er be read, this world will soon cease to exist. In the blink of an eye, the sickle of oblivion will reap aught that you have known. I would advise you not to waste these last moments. Explore the remnants of this world while you can. Perhaps, in doing so, you shall come to see the truth. And know the wretchedness of the world, unworthy of being chronicled. How shall you fare, I wonder? Will you endure in this world, abandoned and unprotected? Sir Arisen! I knew you loved this world too much to leave it behind. Delighted to meet you. Would you mind coming over here? Yon path leads not to our destination. If you would prefer to explore, I shall guide you another time. Perhaps the think of it. Did not Sir Rathaeus speak of releasing the world from its bonds in the seafloor shrine? If this is indeed the world unbound, then perhaps you should seek out the wisdom. You are in need of healing. Allow me. Wait right there. The battle Look out will be legendary!
thing is I want to see this exact scene. Well, Number is unconscious. Do not despair. I'm coming to your aid. Thank goodness someone has a hand to lend. Once more, These writings could be of import. Magic research lab. Ah, arisen. You yet live. I suspected as much, given that your pawn still remains. One might hypothesize that your pawn is sustained by your vital essence. Or perhaps something more. In any case, we ought to apprise one another of the situation. Is there aught you would know? Ah, yes. I trust it has not escaped your notice that the end of days is upon us. After you vanished, together with the Red Dragon, the seas rose to swallow the skies. Twas perhaps a month from that evil day when a new calamity befell us. A host of dragons descended from the skies and fell upon the land with fang and claw. Lars the Oracle called upon me ere you arrived. As she tells it, Melv and its environs have already fallen prey to the beasts. Tis surely only a matter of time before the rest of the kingdom follows suit. I found the poor creature collapsed by the wayside near Batal. Recognizing your pawn, I decided to take the ailing thing into my custody. I thought it possible that the Arisen's pawn might hold the key to making sense of all this madness. Alas, try what I might. Your pawn will not wait. Mayhap you will succeed where I could not. The pawn is, after all, yours to command. Indeed, then I shall take my turn. In your absence, I had hoped your pawn might yield me some information. But as you have returned, I would hear the truth from your lips. Tell me, Arisen, what became of you this past month? So, following your plunge into the sea on the dragon's back, some mysterious presence reached out to you. Could that have been the world forged? Yet why would such a being linger in those fathomless depths? I can only speculate. And speculate I shall. This ought to prove a fruitful avenue of investigation. For that I thank you. Now, if you can find a way to end this interminable slumber, your pawn is, of course, free to rejoin you. Oh, Master! How long I've slept! Far too long, it seems. But worry not. Now that I am awake, I shall follow wherever you lead. Whatever our squabbles may have been, I trust you understand that setting this world to rights takes...
is no less important than the deaths. Here are my now that I think of it, I do seem to recall Lord Phasus lamenting that he'd be reduced to aiding you. But it matters not. Both he and I are too rushed off our feet to care for such trivialities. We seek to devise some means of forestalling these dragons' attacks from above, you see. If you've an interest in helping us fight this battle, perhaps you will join us on Volcanic Island. Tis all the same, either way. This world needs no arisen to save it. Such is Lord Phasus' creed and mine. So you'd make a fool of me, would you? During my time with Lord Phasus, I found myself in a strange state of being. I was conscious of nothing. Nothing that is, save your presence, Master. Full glad am I that we have been reunited. Glad as this reunion is, it must have been a shock to find the world so changed upon your waking. That magic again was most useful. Hard all you want. Won't make a difference when I've grappled, you see. Not bad. Better be of service. Well said. Curative magics are the bane of undead creatures. Seems a contradiction, but it might be worth a try. You have my support. You pulled that off with nearly a hitch. It will be a rude shot for our foe while you pinch their loot. Just 
you run so fast? I can hardly keep you in my sights, Arisen. No harm shall come to you! Thank you. Have no fear. Everything will be all right. No longer do I feel the probing gaze of the Watching One. Is this your doing, newest of the Arisen? I am he who brought the dragon low, and o'er its bones raised the proud kingdom of Vernon. Despite the magnitude of my feet, I was dissatisfied and sought ere greater heights, till at last I ruled the world entire. Thus did I come to know of the Watching One. The being by whose many eyes and ears no one or thing in this world. As to the purpose with which they watch, I know not. It divine one thing. This world has lain neath the Watching One's unwavering gaze ere the dawn of its history. I despaired at this discovery, for, if all is but a stage, did that not render my hard-won glories, my throne astride the world, mere spectacles for the all-seeing eye to watch? Why, twas was all a farce, and I, the fool, exulting in my wooden crown. Do you understand, newest of the Arisen? This, alas, though I cut down all who seemed false, be they man or woman, human or beast, and young or old, I did not succeed. Indeed, my efforts led only to my own ruin. I was dubbed the Mad Sovereign, and by the hand of a new arisen, consigned to this place forevermore. Yet, I can only assume that you have achieved what I could not. How else to explain the changes I sense in the world? Ah, oh, what bitter gall that I cannot witness the outcome for myself. Falter not, newest of the Arisen. For your path is just and fading spirit though I am. I may yet summon those who can be of aid to you. I see you have returned, Arisen One. The Mad Sovereign has called, and so we answer. If you would save the people of this world from ruin, lead them here, for this place may chance to escape the coming destruction. I imagine the people of this world will welcome the tidings that there is a place of refuge awaiting them. Since times of Elder, dragon blood has been used to refine all manner of I myself learned the art by deciphering ancient texts. Remember, draconic blood flows through the veins of lesser drakes as well. Bring me what ye reap, and I shall harness it to 
your benefit. Then I bid ye farewell, and safe travels. I do so enjoy stocking up on some- The mad sovereign's power yet girds this place. It could prove the last bastion of hope for the people of this world. Alas, it will not hold forever. The coming destruction can only truly be forestalled if tis sundered at its heart. Tomorrow, everyone. Off we go then. Ready to forge on? Since times of eld. Remember, draconic blood flows through the veins of lesser drakes as well. Bring me what you need. And then I bid ye farewell. Yon statue, there's a remnant. Love this world.
Need anything? Some snacks? A condom? Let me know. Oh, God love you. Thinks these climbs are ill suited to habitation. It is a lonely place to be sure. within impel the statue to action. If you took nine bullets, everybody call that gangster. Man! Jesus laid in a tomb for three days, and he rose again! Oh, no, that's gangster! Sir Fulvio, the artist whose service Sir Clark commissioned, is residing in Batal. Shall we go and meet with him? This was enough to give me hope of snatching this world from the jaws of ruin. Truly, the strength of the mortal will ne'er ceases to amaze. You seem distracted. Is all to miss? Perhaps you believe destruction to be my goal. But I seek to bring an end to this ill-begotten world. However, naught could be further from the truth. In this world, I exist only to observe, to read all that unfolds. Arisen? Could it be that the World Forged addresses you even now? Well, well. It would seem that this man is aware of my presence, if only in part. I confess I know not what you are. Nor do I care. Be you a transcendent being of a peace with the divine, or only an observer keeping watch on us from afar. Know this. You have no right to deem this world a mistake. He bears a will strong and true. Had he but chosen a different path, he would have made a fine arisen. Yet, there is no sense lamenting what might have been, for that title has lost all meaning. After all, what need is there for a risen? In a world coming apart at the seams. You underestimate mortal kind at your peril. Mark my words, the day will come when I divine the truth of this world. And on that day, I shall free it from its yoke, from the burden of this loathsome dogma of dragons! Pray, follow me. You're a welcome sight, Arisen. As ever, 
I'm yours to command. Sir Fulvio, the artist whose service Sir Cl The Batali Knights use this place to train. You're not one of us, so I cannot imagine you've any bit... Oh? Father, I dare say, than anyone would go for the sake of an idle jest. Hmm. If we must leave, but I think we're a bit short on hands to attend to all that must be done. In fact, there's a rather delicate matter that I could use some help with. A blacksmith and his wife dwell on the encampment outskirts. Might you escort them here? so that they can join the evacuation. The smith, Gustava, is a man of good sense. But as for his wife, well, suffice to say, Cleuna has always been a contentious sort. She'd have naught to do with us, given the choice, and isn't likely to take kindly to the arrival of any of my knights on her doorstep. I can only hope that she will be more willing to listen to you, a third party, as to her. And while you're taking care of that, I will see to it that the incumbent is made ready to depart with all due haste. Pray, allow me to open your chest. I? What do you want? My husband and I are simple folk. In these perilous times, all we ask is to be left alone. Pray leave us be, sir. You are mighty indeed! What manner of calamity befalls us? Sorry, you'd have us evacuate with the encampment? <laughs> Why, we could never! Come what may, this place is up. Now, now, I'll hear none of that. Stranger or no, our guest came all the way out here just to warn us. That's the mark of a good sort, and I trust my gut. This one shan't steer us wrong. But, Ghost Offer, what of your back? Bah! I can manage a little walking. Besides, I'd rather hike a thousand leagues on two bloody stumps than lose you, my dear. Oh, ghost stuff, how can I say no to that? Oof! Confirm this back of mine! Don't trouble. The moment I've been waiting for. Allow me to gather these. I imagined would be most beneficial in combat. Could I trouble you to walk a wee bit slower? My back is. A treasure chest. Oh, I can hardly wait to open it. Let us hope your curiosity will be rewarded. Apologies, Master. My mind was a thousand leagues away. Well, here we are. How long before the evacuation begins, I wonder? Would you find Serenesta? Let him know that we'll wait here till the time comes. How might I aid you, sir? Sir, I implore you to reconsider. Surely you can see that the situation is dire. How many times must I say it? I'll not be ordered about. Not by ye, not by anyone. Now bugger off and leave me alone. <laughs> My word. Uh, I'm afraid there's another matter for which I must beg your assistance. It concerns the fellow I was just speaking with. Sir Lamond, his name is. The man's something of a regular at our hot springs. I sought him out to He's tell just him standing there. He has Menacingly! 
I must confess, I'm at a loss as to how I might convince him. Could I prevail upon you to try your hand? At this point, methinks anything I say will fall on deaf ears. Perhaps we might speak with this guy. What would you? <laughs> not this again. I'm here to live my life as I see fit. I'll not be ordered about by anyone, cuz. You got that? Aye. I know those two. Good people. But I don't see why I should have to be the one responsible for them. Why don't ye do it? If they mean so much to ye. Oi! I heard out ye request. Kindly... Sir Le Monde has refused to lend his aid. And it seems there's little hope of changing his mind. Let us inform Sir Ernesto. So, Sir Le Monde is not to be convinced. The hour of our departure is or will be slow going, no doubt. We have wounded whom we must accommodate. Yet, come what may. Yes, Master. I shall hasten to your aid. This is going from bad to work. this creature will prove a much greater challenge than we exist. How are we meant to attack it without angering it? Put out! Here are comrade 
was a trial indeed. But one we thank you, friend. This place does not have long left, I fear. We ought to get to safety, though I have to wonder if anywhere is safe now. I'd gladly accompany you, believe me. But the others here? Well, suffice to say, they won't be able to join. Follow me, you'll see what I mean. I'll gather these now. It would be a shame to forget their location when we need them most. Well met, sir. It is a jail of sorts, this place. A compound where we set captured pawns to work. It's slavery. They were supposed to be digging up old ruins or some such. Confess, I don't know all of the ins and outs of the operation. Underlings like myself were given orders and little else, you see. Now there's a worthy prize. If only it weren't so far away. Well, here you have it. They've been like this for a month straight now. They refuse to leave. You might as well try talking to a wall. You have more luck. I know they don't die like we do, but it seems cruel to abandon them here, all the same. I never wanted to be here, you know, taking part in all of this. The enslavement of pawns doesn't sit well with me. I suppose that's why I can't bring myself to leave them behind. Either that, or the current state of the world helps to put things in perspective. At any rate, I've tried everything I can think of to get them out, but naught's done any good. I'm at rather a loss. The command came a month ago or more. We are to remain here, and so we remain. I implore you, Arisen. Take me with you. So they're staying here because they were ordered to remain. And they told you that, did they? Strange. I couldn't get a word out of them. I wonder why they saw fit to speak with you. But never mind that. More importantly, you've given me an inkling of the problem at hand. It was the Overseer's doing, methinks. When the world changed, that craven up and ran for his life. But on his way out, he used that artifact they call the God's Way to command the pawns to protect him. I expect that order of his is what the pawns were referring to. But why would they continue to obey when the man is long gone? Listen, friend, I have a thought. What say you have a look around and see what you can turn up? If the Overseer's command is indeed still in effect, it could be that he is lurking somewhere not far from here. Use that key to have a look around. It should open any doors you come across. Best keep your eyes peeled for the Overseer as well. I have a feeling he's still lurking about here somewhere. We have a key, do we? Do not? Shall we try it on the door? So, the pawns were being held here by the power of this gospel. Now they ought to be free to make good their escape. Splendid. There are many who still await our aid. We ought to choose our next destination based on the movement of the clouds. So, there was naught left of the Overseer but bones, eh? I'll wager he thought to take the pawns with him to the grave. He always was a spiteful old goat. At any rate, I'm well grateful for your aid, friend. Now that the pawns are on their feet, methinks I can get them to safety. I only hope they'll heed my words as they have yours. But I'm not worried. I'll find a way to reach them in time, no doubt. My word! Isn't this the god's sway? With this, 
I'll be able to guide the pawns to the refuge without delay. Now there's no chance of any of them being left behind. Seems I've no end of things to thank you for, my friend. I appreciate all you've done here. I'll get the pawns to safety, don't you worry. Majesty, how glad I am to see you safe. My name. Where have you been this past month? The end of the world. Are things truly so dire? Though, I am aware of the dragon attack on Melf. We received word that naught but a smoke in ruin remains. Twas a tragedy, and I would not see it repeated. However, without a clear path, we and the guard shall be hard-pressed to forestall the impending crisis. You would have me evacuate the city? I see. Mayhap it would be for the best. Ever since the fall of Mel, the citizens of Vernworth have lived in fear that their homes are next to be assailed. If there is safe harbor to be found elsewhere, I believe we have naught to lose by seeking sanctuary. But I doubt I could convince the people of this city to abandon their homes, however terrified they may be. Methinks your majesty would do better to ask this of the Regent King. After the false sovereign vanished and the world was altered, his grace has been the one keeping order here in Vermont. To world all... If the people will heed anyone, tis him. So you've come. I'm glad to see you. Captain Brandt has already apprised me of your proposal. A full-scale evacuation of the citizenry. Truth be told, I had reached the same conclusion. So long as we cow within these walls, we must live in fear of going the way of Melv. My ministers have approved the plans, and I have petitioned the encampment survivors and the Thieves' Guild for aid. The only remaining obstacle is my mother. She has set herself stubbornly against any such flight. I have tried to make her see reason, but of late she has taken to shutting herself in her chambers. However, I cannot bring myself to leave my own mother behind. If I cannot convince her, I mean to remain here and share in her fate. Now, there are a few matters I must attend to before we can evacuate, and I would fain welcome your assistance. We will require several ox carts to carry the sick and aged out of the city. Might I prevail upon you to petition the merchant at the ox cart station in the west of the city for their use? You may assure him that the royal treasury will foot any and all expenses. Queen Regent Deesa hardly leaves her chambers, and all her meals come back scarcely touched. Between you and me, I fear for her health. Slow your feet! You run too fast for the likes of me! Let us endeavor to keep up, though we are less fleet of foot. Be gone with you, ruffian! 
These carts are mine. I paid good gold for them. And if you think I'll surrender a single one, you'd best think again. I require the use of all of them to transport my wealth to safety. <laughs> Bye. What are you doing? Put that away. No, spare me. I pray you. I fear for my life. Well, reckon he won't be coming back here in a hurry. As a matter of fact, I'd like to thank you for that. It didn't sit right, see? Having my wares claimed by some puffed up minister trying to save his own skin. Anyhow. As long as I've got my gold, who takes the carts is no concern of mine. And if that craven comes crawling back, I'll tell him bandits took them. Minister Allard has fled, and good riddance. I doubt there ever was a more cravenly character in all Vermond. I quite agree. Have you come to claim my life, Arisen? Well, far be it from me to deny you, but I shall go to the grave with a smile on my lips, for I have no regrets. All I did, I did for my darling son. So do as you will. I have no intention of begging for mercy. <sighs> have brought mother to me, I see. My thanks, friend. You have done me a great service. Sven. You may leave us. Now that we can speak without a door twixt us, I am confident that I can persuade her. Mother, I beg you, join the evacuation. You need not fall with this city. I would not see you take your crimes wholly on your own shoulders. That weight is as much mine to bear as tis yours. My son, you truly would make a fine and goodly ruler. Mm -hmm. Your kindness will save mm -hmm. many lives. Mm -hmm. Of that I have no doubt. I beg you, join the evacuation. You need not fall with this city. I would not see you take your crimes wholly on your own shoulders. Wait, is as much a mind to bear. Ah, you've returned. You do? My thanks. That puts paid to the last of our preparations. I will inform the citizenry forthwith. right there.
Might not one of the bandits in Burnworth's jail know of the methods employed by thieves and their ilk? Follow me, Master. I shall guide you to the location. Right you are. Must make haste. The red clouds draw ever near. We ought to choose our next destination based on the movement of the clouds. is defeated. Oh, here's hoping this will be enough to forestall the Red Cloud's advance for a while. What is the meaning of this arisen? to how they were before.
Onde Kasinke Fanil. I'll gather these now. It would be a shame to forget their location when we need them most. Turn. I am so happy to see you safe. You were gone so long. I was very worried. Hey, no. Oh. You think we should leave the arbor? I am not sure my father will like that idea, but I can try to convince him. Please, follow me. As arborist. Sertaliusin is the leader of the Elven people. Let us follow our guide, that we might speak with him. Indeed, you are correct. Findelnar, Nevea Nolwendel is Kemen. Kasinke telpi nun fin fionar elwe arfarne nenwen sur orne? Iavs Morvani morivin findelnar. Neve atara morivin. Lisfa aldakar kemen ros. Hera ur lis nun. Yav morin garina like asar kemen ros iloratu anfir tara. Eteler karil morivin alkadar palan. Kemen nun lis alekano. Surne kemen ros here non yav kuruir. Fallis is rod lintar. Nea valecano ve anun sinde luntena. Nun lis amanda kill angadur femor. Herenon nun lia findelnar. Lia wemor. Findelnar morivin orne osto. Firnis morivin. Morivin kemen tur alecano. Menelum heroth. Alcarwa fir nun eldaia. Ane martyr. Tindome ingarina fa alme al carwa? Et aler, lea fermor el dalia eralot, sorne an fa meltol, vanalin heror sorom. Casinke telpe nun finale, lera ne fir heranon, anne arta her firnis. Only time will tell whether the cutting shall take root. For now, let us make for the seafloor shrine. Of course.
is gone. Let us revel in the knowledge that this region has escaped its destruction. We've made it then. What's our first order of business, Arisen? I must go. Casinke telpe nun findaler, aidalia anandor nun. Ne nambue yav stir uru fin kemen ros uru ne teren, ne romen an ar telpe minasvana. Duintare me ke nalen mel tol, paran te lume an lis, ne kemen ka yainju nun sil, ne mel tol linkan altakar an fir nun fi amor. Mori vin paran vani sintiel. Palan hiar menran, lis fa arnefane. Elorato ala, nun mor arda her. Firnis an erumar isil rod et teller, lera aetena. Nenwen mor aiwanon, al carwa fir nun eldaia menelume sur carilm. Iav stir lalasta. Nun falesmir magananon? Anamor lis turculion ekiales. The elves... I thank you, friend. It would be no exact... Your fight continues, does it not? Be well, and come back safe. 
Over here, if you would. You've pushed your luck too far. I'll not take that from you. Pray calm yourselves, good people. I will have none of this squabbling. Sir Manella, you don't understand. This scoundrel's the one who started it. No, you don't understand. This is no time for the people of Batal to be quarreling amongst themselves. We shan't weather this calamity unless we can recall our common purpose and unite our efforts towards it. Forbidden Magic Research Lab appears to have been constructed rather recently. Ah, Sir Arisen. You are returned, I see. With the world in such disarray, I could not stand to be away from my homeland. Thus did I return, to render what aid I may. I maintain order as best I can, but for every fire I extinguish, it seems three more are incited behind my back. But enough of my woes. What brings you here? You wish us to evacuate? Mayhap the idea merits some thought. After all, if we sit on our haunches, it is likely only a matter of time before we share the fate of Mel. Alas. The people of Batal are far from united in purpose at present. Should we proceed, unheeding of their divisions, I fear that our efforts would come undone ere long. With every soul at their wit's end, conflict is like to spark at the slightest provocation. As such, before we take any measures, I would have you walk amongst the people, Sir Arisen. Behold their plight with your own eyes. And should you encounter any discord, pray do aught you can to resolve the people's quarrels and assuage their fears. Such efforts will doubtless allow the evacuation to proceed all the more smoothly. As for me, my work here is far from done. Let us part ways for now, and reconvene when you have accomplished all you can. Blair Temp understandable, given the circumstances. Let us aid in mediating the quarrels arising in Bagvatal. Indeed, you are correct. Ah! You're just riding on your father's coattails! You slander my honor, sir! I demand a duel. This is no business of yours. Be gone! Now, now, Nara, let's not be too hasty. If we are to duel, we ought to have a witness. Otherwise, who's to say the victor fought with honor? Aye, true enough. Without a witness, either of us could simply kill the other, then disavow the use of any underhandedness. Well, sir? What say you? Will you watch over us while I take this scoundrel to task? This knave dared to slight my honor. He said my swordsmanship was hardly fit to wound a training dummy. <laughs> the bloody nerve of him. <laughs> and I'd say it again. 
was your dear father's patronage that made you a sentinel, not your own skill. You have my gratitude, sir. Let us delay no further. Come, Scario. Prepare yourself. Have at you! This is me on trust in yourself as I trust in you! Drive them back! Stay back! Lest you get caught in the fray. We'll oh, pull yes, through yet! By God, well, mate, no tell. Else there is no tomorrow! You want to dog water? You want to rice water? How do you get boxed? Your ass? Lit I admit it. I underestimated your skill. <laughs> the loss is mine. Nay. It was I who underestimated you. I'd thought to score an easy victory. But you fought fair and capably. We owe you a debt, sir. Tis on your account that we've seen some sense. Were it not for your timely appearance, I'd wager this nonsense might have cost one of us their life. Indeed. Better to hone our respective skills than take up arms against petty slights, I say. It seems some things can only be resolved by crossing blades. But I doubt they'll quarrel again after this. One could not have hoped for a gladder outcome. A customer, then. That changes things. Oi! I saw it first. <laughs> Trust a flea-ridden hide to take it all for himself. Uh, why must I share with a fangless one? This is no more your food than Batal is your land. You there! You couldn't have put this upstart in his place for me, won't you? Go on, lay into it. If that's what you think, why don't you mind your own business? All right, clear off. Pretty words shan't fill our bellies. You said it's bad to hurt people. Wow! Thanks, sir. Say, Rakim, would you like some? I really? Thanks. That's mighty kind of you. If only our fathers could do the same. Oi, leave my kid alone. You're not some child snatcher, are you? Wait. You shared your food with them. I... Oi. Mayhap we're not so different after all. And we both our children fed. We've no reason... The desire to protect one's kin transcends race and culture. It just goes to show. We are none of us so different. Outstanding. I have a dozen questions. I've had well enough of your nitpicking. I reckon the world would be better off without you. <laughs> Oi, you! Don't go poking your nose in our business. This I leave off or we'll make you. Fight back, nigga! Fight back, nigga! Fight back! Fight back! Have you lost your bloody mind? Reckon you could just cut us down in the street? What's the matter with you? <laughs> hey? Fine, fine. We'll set our squabble aside for today. So bother us no more.
Ah, oh, Sir Arisen. In less pressing circumstances, I would take issue with your methods. <laughs> but I cannot deny your efficacy. The people of Batal are beginning to see that they must stand together if they are to survive this calamity. We shall see the fruits of your labors when the time comes to evacuate. At the very least, we need not expect too much opposition to the announcement. Pray return to Empress Nadinia and apprise her of your doings. I must remain here to ensure no further squabbles arise. Heavens only know how many lives you have saved this day. I hope you'll accept this humble reward for your efforts. What say we report back to Empress Nadinia? Her Majesty ought to be willing to commence the evacuation now. There's something strange about the way time passes here. It would seem this is no longer the world we know. Is there no way to return things to how they were before? Her Majesty has begun her supplications. None may see her ere they conclude. Stay your hand, Vera. This one may pass. Come hither. We would speak with you. Just calm down. Don't do it. Go One of our ministers informs us that you have been a spied in the city, resolving the people's troubles. You have our gratitude for your efforts, which have doubtless bettered the fate of this nation and its citizenry. Your journey continues, does it not? We wish you good fortune on your travels, wheresoe'er they may take you. Yet, ere we part ways, we would make another request of you. It regards Lord Phasus. Though we have implored the man to join the evacuation, he has staunchly refused to leave this land behind. We thought that he might be more inclined to heed your words, as our own have fallen on deaf ears. Would you be willing to call on him in our stead? Of course, you are free to decline if our proposal is an unwelcome one. Pray excuse the interruption, your majesty, but I fear time is upon us. I would see you prepared for the road ahead. Indeed. Forgive us, but we must take our leave. Farewell. You saw the sky fall, I trust. I doubt you could have missed it. And wherever the sky falls, a dragon soon appears to lay waste to the land. Or so I had assumed, after what befell Melv. Yet aught here appears to be different. Has our ruin been forestalled, or merely postponed? I must examine that creature may well be the key to unraveling the origins of this cataclysm. The path through this rock has been sealed to us. There's naught for it but to... Many paths are close to us now. On account of the dragon's descent, no doubt. But we must find a way to reach it. Confound this obstruction! I suppose I ought to have expected this. Answers were ne'er so easily won. Oh, 
Monsters. Summoned by that beast, no doubt. I grant you light in this land. This is the only way forward. Up we go. Why do you... Uh, a fine welcome indeed. I can only hope that the worst is now behind us. A theory unproven is of little practical use. The beast fell powers are twice as terrible in the flesh. The month I spent with Lord Phasus, her experience in I was conscious of nothing. Nothing that is so present. All glad and I have been doing it. There is a great deal of need. There is much for us to ponder. But for now, we must find a means to forge ahead. The 
Let us try for the same result with our next attack. Dragon at the heart of all this destruction. We might have learned. There's people that are dying. <sighs> Never mind. You've your charge, it is true, and the fiends appear to be falling back. But I trust you won't object if I take a sample of its remains. After all, your role is to save this world, and mine is to pursue its secrets. Though this land has seemingly been spared its destruction, there is no guarantee of safety. The oceans yet cloud the skies, and monsters swarm in ever greater numbers. As twill be difficult to continue my research under such conditions, I have decided to evacuate. I only hope that this sanctuary of yours will prove more conducive to my work. Never did I imagine such a dragon could exist. It is a glad thing we felled it, whatever it was.
snuffed out by candles by the cold breath of oblivion. Eventually, the great whale tired of witnessing this. It sought to overturn oblivion by granting unto it a law, a duty, an identity. I speak. to unfold. Yet, it seems I will not be there 
to watch it.